Mantor Ministries presents the Mantor Guy Podcast. We may talk about football. We could mention bacon. We might reference Rocky movies. We'll probably discuss the Mantor conferences, but we'll definitely talk about how to grow in our walk with God. Here's your host, the Mantor Guy, Jamie Holden. Hey guys, welcome back to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Jimmy Holden here, and I'm so happy to have you with us once again this week. Well guys, we talked a few weeks ago about how as God's men, we need to shine bright in the dark world we live in. And I want to kind of continue that thought this week, because I want to talk with you about one of the things I truly believe makes Christians stand out as light in a dark world. And this trait is so important that Jesus said it was one of the biggest commandments ever. So what is this commandment? Well, guys, stay tuned this week to find out. I love reading stories in the New Testament when Jesus would really stick it to the establishment swamp rats in Jerusalem. They would come at him intent on making him look bad or embarrassing him. And their goal was to discredit him and show everyone that he wasn't really worthy of being the spiritual leader that they were worthy of being. They were so much better than them. They were more qualified than Jesus. He had no business doing that. And one of those situations we had in the Bible, you know, Pharisees and Herodians, they came to Jesus to try and trip him up. And they said to him, you know, Jesus, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or isn't it right? You know, should we pay the taxes or not? But Jesus knew that they were being hypocritical. And he said to them, why are you trying to trap me? He said, bring me a coin, let me look at it. And they brought him a coin and he looked at it and he asked him, you know, whose pictures on this coin? You know, whose inscriptions written on this coin? And they said, Caesar's. And then he replied to them, well, give back to Caesar's what's Caesar's and give to God what's God's. And you know, this was kind of the ultimate gotcha moment. They were trying to set Jesus up. They peppered him with impossible questions, hoping he'd either break the Jewish law, the Roman law, or at least seriously offend the sensibilities about the crowd who was always following him around. They hated that he had bigger crowds than them. But yet, despite their best efforts, they kept failing over and over to get Jesus to fail. And that's when one honest man asked Jesus a sincere question. And he said to him, you know, one of the teachers of the law came and he heard them talking. And hearing that Jesus had given really good answers to the other questions, he said to them, you know, Jesus, of all the commandments in the Bible, what is the most important? And listen to what Jesus said. He said, the most important one is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Listen to this. The second is this. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. There is no greater command than these two commands. And with that answer, Jesus explained how showing love to God and to others was really the most important thing to do and how it really set people apart, helped them to shine bright in a dark world. And we all know we're supposed to love God, and we do our best to love and serve God. But the second half of this commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Let's face it, guys, that one's a little bit more difficult to do. And because it's so difficult, often we'll ask, you know, who's my neighbor? Kind of find a way, do I have to be nice to this person? Are they really considered my neighbor? But let's look how Jesus answered that story, question. He answered by telling the story of the Good Samaritan. And we all, most of us have heard this story before, how a Samaritan, how a man was walking along and he was robbed and beaten and left for dead in the side of the road. And he was passed by a Jewish priest who did nothing to help him. And he was passed by a leader of the law, and he did nothing to help him either. But a Samaritan, someone who was despised in Jewish culture, saw the bleeding man. He went over and he helped him. He took care of him. He got him the help he needed. He took him to the doctors. He took him, found him a place to stay. And he took care of all of his needs. And Jesus ended this story with saying, which of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits? And the answer was obvious. It was the man who showed mercy. And Jesus said, now, go and do the same thing. So as we hear the story Jesus told, we see Jesus defines our neighbor as anyone we come in contact with in our daily life. You know, anyone in our sphere of influence, anyone, anybody we encounter. It includes our immediate family, our co-workers, but also includes our extended family. It includes the people who live near you, who work near you, the people you carpool with to or work or to school. 
your friends, and yes, it even includes your enemies. It includes the parents at your children's school or on their sports team. It includes the woman at the grocery store. It includes the waiter at the restaurant. Basically, guys, anyone that you encounter during your day is your neighbor, and you are responsible to show love to them. It's how we shine bright in a dark world. So how do you go about showing love to that many people? Well, we're going to find out, guys, right after this break. Yep, you're listening to the Mantor Guy Podcast. Did you know that over 33% of girls have seen pornography online before the age of 13? Protect your daughters by installing Covenant Eyes on all your computers and mobile devices. Covenant Eyes blocks all pornography so that it can't reach your little girl and cause damage to her spiritually or emotionally. Sign up today using the code MANTOR and receive one month of service free. Guys, that's a no-brainer. Try it for a month and see how it helps protect your precious daughters from the filth of internet porn. Sign up using code MANTOR, M-A-N-T-O-U-R, at CovenantEyes.com today. I know you're going to dig this. Like what you're hearing? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Thanks. I will press on. I won't look back. I will go where God leads me. I will lead my family. I will reach the lost. I will overcome my weakness. Whatever it takes. I know it doesn't get easier. But I will get stronger. Whatever it takes. I will run the race to win the prize. To hear God say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful servant. I will be the man that God created me to be. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. In 2020, Mantor Ministry proudly presents Whatever It Takes. For Mantor conference dates and locations, visit mantorministries.com. Listen to the Mantor Guy podcast on the go via Apple Podcast and Google Play. Thanks. All men want one thing in life, to be remembered. The good news is we all have a legacy. This is the question, though. Will you leave behind a good legacy or a bad legacy? Learn how to create a godly legacy in Mantor Ministries' book, Legacy, Living a Life That Lasts. By reading the stories of godly men from the Bible, working through the study questions, and taking up the legacy challenges at the end of each chapter, you'll be well on your way to living a life that lasts. It also includes a bonus workbook that you can use with your small groups. Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. How will you be remembered? Order your copy today at MantorMinistries.com. Welcome back, guys. We were headed into our commercial break asking the question, how do we show love to others? Well, guys, we start by doing what Jesus said and treating people the way that we want to be treated. I mean, take the parable he told us, for example. You know, when we talked about the first half, the Good Samaritan. In this story, we had a guy who had obvious needs. He had just been in a crisis. He'd been beaten, stripped of everything, and was just laying there naked, bleeding, and dying. In that moment, he needed safety and he needed medical help. You know, in today's term, he needed someone to call 911. He needed urgent, practical care. And yet, the first two people he met, they did nothing. They just walked by and they ignored him. They ignored the situation and they just went on with their lives. It was only the Samaritan who stopped and he went out of his way and he showed the man love by meeting his practical needs. And guys, as followers of God, we need to realize a part of our calling is to follow the example of the Good Samaritan and show love to people by meeting their practical needs. When we encounter someone who has an obvious need, we should do all we can to meet it. You know, part of this involves being involved in community outreaches that meet the needs of those who are in desperate situations in our community. As Christians, we need to be donating both our time and our finances so that people can see the love of God practically demonstrated to the most hurting and helpless among us. And yet, just as important as charity work is, I don't believe that it totally encompasses our call to practically meet the needs of others. Instead, I believe that we need to be aware of the needs of others around us and find a way to demonstrate God's love to them by meeting their needs. 
I mean, for instance, do you know someone that could use a ride to the hospital or somebody could be with during a really difficult doctor's appointment? Do you know a family who would appreciate a home-cooked meal during a time of crisis or grief? You know, could you cut the grass for an elderly woman across the street who's struggling with pain to do it herself? Do you know a young couple who needs a few hours to themselves but can't afford a babysitter? Do you know a young man without a father in his life that needs a mentor who's willing to shoot hoops with him and just listen to him? You see, ultimately, the Holy Spirit's going to point out to you people who have obvious needs. And your question is, how are you going to respond to these needs? I mean, do you get this, Christians? You're called to show love by helping to meet the needs of others, no matter what it costs you personally. Are you willing to do whatever it takes to shine bright to the world around you? And I get it. These are hard questions. But there are questions that I truly believe we all need to ask ourselves from time to time because it's just so easy to fall into the trap of minding our own business. And honestly, that's what the priest and the temple assistant we heard about in the Great Samaritan did. They just minded their own business. They kept walking. They stayed out of the situation. And they just minded their own business. And it is so easy to get so busy and so wrapped in ourselves and our own problems that we forget that the central part of our calling is to love others and show them God's love. From time to time, even the most well-meaning Christians need to ask themselves this question, am I listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit when he shows me a practical need that I can meet? Am I responding in obedience? And how can I do this better? Sometimes, guys, meeting someone's practical need is simply just being nice to them. Some people just need someone to listen. Some just need a word of encouragement or even just a smile, a thank you so much to help them get through a difficult day. You know, what about like when you're in a grocery store and there's a long line, the clerk just made another mistake and and has to take time to fix it. How do you handle that situation with them? Are you kind to them when it's your turn or do you let them know, no, they're really inconvenienced you by taking you so long? You know, guys, there's just so many ways we could look at this. I remember when I was in my early 20s, the Holy Spirit really started driving this point home to me that we need to be showing love to others just by treating them kindly. And, you know, he used a really odd source to do this. It was a popular television show about a minister and his family. I mean, I get it. God talks to us all differently, right? And as I was watching the show, the Holy Spirit began pointing out to me that this man, how he interacted with the community. I noticed how he and his wife always spoke kindly to people. They were always friendly. They always started conversations with everyone they came in contact with throughout their day. And when someone needed to talk, they stopped and they listened. They helped the people in their community, whether they attended the church they pastored at or not. They were just genuinely nice people. People trusted them. They curbed their personal frustrations at the front door. They never took them out and the other people, and they always made time for people. And as I watched this show, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, Do you know that that this is a calling on your life? You start walking your calling when you treat people the way that you want to be treated. And it was a life-changing moment for me as I realized that I had a personal responsibility to be a representative of God to every person I came in contact with throughout the day. And from that day forward, I really started training myself to just be nice, to be kind. And honestly, it doesn't come easy. I have days just like everyone else when life is hard, where I have physical pain. I just kind of want to growl people and say, let me alone. And yet, as I obeyed God and choose to put on kindness, put on friendliness to practice patience and to practice love, I begin to see not only myself, but the people around me notice and they change. It's a way to show light to the world. You know, we try to encourage people whenever possible. Let me tell you a personal story or two here. I remember recently we went into a store. Um, we had an appointment. As we were waiting for our appointment, I couldn't help but notice there was an elderly gentleman in front of us in line And he was just accusing the woman behind the counter of being a crook and a thief and just treating him over. Everyone in this place of business heard him say over and over, you're all just a bunch of thieves over and over again. 
And honestly, I don't know what the dispute was about. However, I am absolutely sure that the woman who was winning him was not responsible and was doing everything she could to help him. So when it's our turn, I apologized to this woman on this man's behalf. I said to her, you know, I'm so sorry that he treated you this way. And then we did the very best we could to encourage with her and to work with her so that our turn with her went so easily and so well. I remember another time we were driving to Delaware. Honestly, I don't remember if it was a man tour we were going to, another ministry engagement, or if we were just going to the beach. I honestly don't remember. But I remember that the line to pay for the turnpike was taking a really long time. And yes, I know I need to get an easy pass. I'm going to work on that. But anyways, as we approached the toll booth, I noticed a car in front of us was filled with four guys, and all four of them were screaming at the toll booth worker, swearing at her, and using all the four-letter words that you could. And they just berated her up and down. And as I sat there watching it, it really made me angry at how they were treating her. But even more, I felt so bad for this woman who was just trying to do her job to provide money for herself and her family. And when it was our time to pay the toll, I said to the woman, you know, those men, they had no right to treat you the way they treat you. And even though they're never going to apologize to you, please allow me to apologize to you for them. I am so sorry that you were treated that way. They were wrong, and you didn't deserve it. And let me tell you what, this woman was stunned. She was visibly surprised, but she was also touched, and you could visibly see her relax. The tenseness in her body relaxed, knowing we were going to yell at her for the long line, and she was able to move past the behavior and go on with her day. Of course, we don't just make it a point to encourage people after others have lost their temper. We're also very mindful we don't allow our anger or our frustration to explode on other people when we're confronted with difficult situations or inconveniences. For instance, as traveling ministers, we often run into problems with hotel rooms. You know, rooms we request weren't reserved. Sometimes rooms we get are dirty and need attention. Other times things break and we need to completely move to other rooms. I mean, really, traveling as a minister is not as glamorous as it seems. But when these things happen, we try to put the person at ease helping us. Letting them know that mistakes happen, we aren't angry, we just need something fixed. As we've lived our lives this way, it's been amazing what God has been able to do. I think one of my favorite stories involves a gas station attendant who started out as a stranger. And every time I would pay for my gas, I made a point to ask her how she was doing, to have some small talk with her, and to always make sure I said, you know, have a great day when we were done. And over time, as I was friendly with her, and we talked every time we filled the gas tank, she began to see us as friends. And after a while, when she saw us coming, she, you know, she'd come out and she'd come to the car and actually talk with Odessa while I pumped the gas. And eventually we were able to share with her about God, you know, tell her about a local church she might enjoy. And we even gave her a copy of one of Odessa's book about finding significance in God. And yet we honestly never set out to witness to her. We are continuing the habit of treating people the way God would treat them. And she responded to this love that was shown to her. Guys, that's one of the reasons that showing love is such an important and vital part of our calling. Because we live in a world that is starving for love. They have their fill of sensuality and romance, but they are starving for genuine human connection. And people are always caught off guard when someone is nice, they're kind, they're patient, or understanding. People are actually surprised. It stands out, and they remember it. And it's a way to shine light in the darkness. It's treating people with respect and showing them love and helping them as people identify that we as Christians are different. And it gives the opportunity to say, when they ask, what makes you different, to show them, you know, I'm different because of God in my life. Guys, today, this week, the challenge we have for you is, can people tell you are a follower of Christ by the way you treat them? Are you actively treating people with love? Are you going out of your way to meet the practical needs of people? When people are in crisis, do they know they can count on you? Are you willing to walk across the street to listen, to be a shoulder to cry on, to take a casserole to a family in trauma, or even just have a friendly conversation? 
The sad thing is that some Christians would rather travel across the globe to tell a stranger about Jesus than smile at their neighbor across the street. And this is not how it's supposed to be. We need to be people who do what's right, who meet the needs, who make the phone call, who say to people around them, we're here. How can I help you? What about inside of your church? Do you prefer to hang with your few friends in your little clique? Or do you welcome the stranger, the family that's obviously never been to church, the unpopular person, the difficult person, the person that no one really wants to include in their gathering? I sometimes wonder, you know, what Paul say to us today, you can have the most professional-sounding worship, the best coffee, the greatest sermons, and the most awesome light show in town. But if your church doesn't show love, it doesn't have anything. Guys, from time to time, we all need to check our hearts and ask, what can I do to make my church a more loving place? And then do our part to demonstrate that love of God. That's what matters outside the church as well. How do we interact with people on a daily basis? How do we speak to them? How do we treat others? Are we totally obsessed with ourselves and our schedule? Or do we go out of our way to demonstrate God's love to everyone we meet? Here's one for you. This is a really tough one, but I'm going to say it anyway. How about on social media? Let me be bold here and say that I have seen too many of God's men posting some really harsh, mean, kind of borderline racist posts on, in their political opposition to those pra- trapped in the sin of homosexuality or towards our documented immigrants or the political party, party with whom they disagree. Now, I believe that we as Christians need to stand for what we believe, but we cross the line when our posts are v- vulgar, racist, or unnecessarily cruel. Jesus always stood for truth, but he was never racist or cruel about it. He always loved the lost, and he used his love to push them towards truth. Jesus never condoned their sin, but he always treated them with dignity and with respect, showing them godly love. Why would anybody come to Jesus and enter our churches if they truly believe that Christians hate them? I am not saying in any way, shape, or form to compromise. I'm saying make posts that draw people to Jesus rather than sending them running away from him. Guys, ultimately we need to ask ourselves, what can I do to better demonstrate the love of God in my life? We need to recognize that this is our calling, and we need to do whatever it takes to shine bright and to show love to our family, to our friends, to our neighbors, and to the world around us. We need to recognize that our calling is to follow Jesus' greatest commandment, love God and love others. Whatever it takes, guys, this needs to be our mission. The Mentor Guy's Final Thought. Well, guys, we're out of time this week. I just hope you continue as you move through 2020 to find ways to shine your light bright in this dark world in which we live. I also hope you would join us every week in 2020. We have some great topics lined up coming forward. We have powerful messages from our conferences. We even went out and we bought some new equipment so we can start broadcasting some of our workshop sessions as well as the main sessions through this podcast from our conferences. We also have some great interviews coming up in the coming weeks. Guys, 2020 is going to be an amazing time in the Mantor Guy podcast. I really hope you join us. And thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you giving up your time to listen. I say that every week, but I really do mean it. I want you to know, I know we live in the busy world, and I appreciate that you take time to listen to this podcast. And I'd love to have you go to Apple Podcasts, iTunes, and Google Play. Subscribe, leave a five-star rating and review. You can listen to it on the go that way. It also helps more men find a podcast. Also, guys, make sure to head to our website, mentorministries.com, and check out the dates and locations of our Whatever It Takes conferences. All the speakers are listed there as well. 
Um, we conferences have kicked off. It's been an amazing start to the conferences. Um, as a recorder, we've had our first mentor. Men flooded the altars, responding to the call to do whatever it takes to get rid of the sin in their lives so that defeat is no longer an option. God moved mightily, and we're expecting God to continue to move mightily at our conferences. So check out all the information at mentorministries.com. Also, we have our books, resources, monthly newsletter. All that's there. You can read the first chapter of Whatever It Takes, our new book there for free. So much stuff's on that website, guys. Take full advantage it at mantorministries.com. But once again, guys, thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next week on the Mantor Guy podcast. Guys, make sure to show love to all your neighbors around you. Have a great week, guys. Thanks for listening to the Mantor Guy podcast. Be sure to visit mantorministries.com to learn more about our books, men's ministry resources, and our mentor conferences. Hey guys, Jamie Holden here. Did you know that only 10% of churches have a healthy, thriving men's ministry? That's only 1 out of 10 churches. Well, my mission is to see this number become 100%. Join me in my work with HEUS Missions to help develop men's ministry in the local church. Become a monthly financial investor in the work God called me to do by going to mentorministries.com partner and clicking on the Give Online button. Together, we can see God continue to move among men. One more thing before I wrap up this week, guys. You need to head to CovetedEyes.com and sign up today to protect you and your loved ones from the many traps awaiting you on the internet. You know, I am a Covenant Eyes user. I just signed my 69-year-old father up and put Covenant Eyes on his phone and his laptop. I believe in it. It's an amazing tool. It helps you stay pure online. Guys, I encourage you to try it today. If you use the code MANTOR, you get 30 free days. That's 30 free days. What do you have to lose? So head to CovenantEyes.com, try it today. Like I said, what do you have to lose, guys? The Mantor Guy Podcast, helping men grow in their walk with God.